Um, what do you call peanut butter bits? What could you call peanut butter bits with hard candy shells in the shape of various animals? Now, if you do the local crossword puzzle, the Albany Times Union, you already know the answer to this. I just thought it was cool. I love puns. And the answer is Reese's species, because that's a Reese's piece in the shapes of animals. Reese's species. It's a great pun. But trust me, even if you don't think so. Anyway, that's a... <laughs> that's okay. I, I've, I hear it in my head. It echoes. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, let's get on with... with uh, oh, not too bad. But anyway, that, that's kind of where we're sitting. We're going to give you an extra couple of days on... Uh, what did I just do there? Oh, I just hit the wrong window and started up a video. Um, we're going to give you an extra couple of days on... Uh, uh, an extra couple of dropped lecture exercises... Uh, and you know, hopefully that'll kind of get some of you over the hump, and uh, and we'll be back in in good in good uh, in good move in a good place. All right, um, there we are. So today we're going to talk about yet another type. It seems like we're introducing a new type pretty much every class. The cool thing about this this next type is it's called a tuple. Um, but what a tuple is, is it's not a raw type. It's not like a uh, an integer or a float or a Boolean or a string. What a tuple is, is it's a container type. And by the way, most of this lecture is not covered in class in textbook. That's because we're going to be looking at uh, we're going to be looking at tuples and then modules and images. Um, and images in particular, this is the the Conda install pillow that you did at the start of the semester. We want to kind of take a break from this raw stuff and, and get into some fun uses of, of, of modules and containers and tuples. Uh, and this seems like a good place to do it. In a couple of weeks, you'll do a lab on tuples that hopefully you will enjoy. I thought, or I'm sorry, a lab on images that hopefully you'll enjoy. Uh, I find it kind of fun um, and a little interesting. Um, so the nice thing about tuples is they allow us to group multiple values together. And this is pretty valuable in a number of situations. We'll kind of get into it. If you're already experienced in, in uh, Python, you may be thinking of something called a list, which is also a grouping of multiple values together. Um, tuples are not quite lists. Um, they're, they're, they're different, um, but they're not all that far from it. So, you know, hopefully it's going to be familiar to you and, uh, and it will kind of make... Um, sense and we'll, we'll kind of point out the differences to them particularly as we get into uh, doing to uh, doing lists after that we're going to revisit modules um, we, we talked a little bit about the math module we looked at math.py and math.square root and a bunch of functions and we assured you that they were very useful we're going to show you how to write a module and we're going to start talking to you about why it's very important why we insist on you um, actually commenting your code um, because it turns out to be very useful in the context of modules and then we're just going to play with, with the image module. And we're going to show you some, some neat things about function calls, some neat things about modules, and kind of introduce you to a, to a fun data type and a fun uh, couple of exercises. So a tuple is a simple. Uh, now, this is simple in terms of not complicated. It's actually a compound data type. It's a container class um, that allows you to group multiple, multiple units together. Um, and then of course, we can access them. So I'm going to cheat and kind of steal this for now. And then we're going to go to our handy dandy uh, spider web. There we go. Handy dandy spider web. And uh, we'll come in here and I'll do a control V. And I have now said X is something kind of weird. X isn't 5, X isn't 4, X isn't 10. X is a tuple. Um, the parentheses are kind of the notation for a tuple. Um, but if I were to say something like uh, y equals 6, 9, 6, 9, 11, well, that's a tuple too. It doesn't look as much like a tuple, but when we ask the interpreter for what it is, the interpreter certainly knows that it's a tuple. It's a group of values. You specify them with the, with the comma. Um, when we're trying to indicate them, when the, when the Python interpreter is trying to indicate them, it throws the parentheses around them. Um, and it is 
a data type so we can print X, we can print Y, and if we're in the console here in the interpreter, we can ask for the value of X and ask for the value of Y, and you'll see that it comes out and it gives us this three values with the parentheses around it, just to kind of indicate it's a tuple. This is a compound data type which means that we have to be able to access the, the stuff inside it. So we can come in here and we can uh, sorry about that. So we can come in here and we can access each one of these individually. So if we do X sub zero, that gives us the zeroth element of X or the first, you know, the, the, the premier element of X, which is the value four. Um, one would give us five, two would give us 10, and we could do the same thing with y as well. y sub one would give us uh, nine corresponding to up here. So we can set the tuple. We can ask for the value of individual components. We can ask for the value of the entire tuple, right? And if, you, if you're thinking, what you might be thinking is, that seems an awful lot like a string. Let's see. Saturday was talk like a pirate day, so we can do something like S equals arg. And S is a string, right? It comes out as a string. Double quotes, single quotes are unimportant. Um, and we can also go through and we can ask questions like what is S sub zero? What is S sub four? Uh, and of course we can go S sub five. And of course we can go S sub six, but now we've walked off the string and we're getting an index out of range error. Uh, similarly, you know, if we have X zero, one, two, if we ask for X sub three, well, we've walked off the tuple index, okay? So tuples and strings have a lot in common. Tuples can hold any data type. Strings can hold, well, the character representation, you know, any character, essentially, or any strings of characters. Um, let's see where we are. The important thing, one important thing to remember is that both strings and tuples are immutable. Okay, so I am going to, if you don't know what immutable is, I'll enter that into the chat window. Right? That's what immutable is. Um, and immutable simply means that uh, once it's defined, it can't be changed. So let me come up here. And that's a little bit misleading because when we come in and we say X is four, five, 10, we can say X equals, equals um, six, seven, nine. And we've certainly changed what X points to, but that's not exactly what it means. Um, and we can do something like S, right? S equals arg, and we can say S equals S, or we can say S dot lower, right? Which changes it all to lowercase. And we can say something like uh, S equals S dot lower. And if we look at that, well, now S has been changed. The thing is, is we can't come in and we can't say S sub zero equals capital A. Right, so we can't come in and change an individual element of a string, uh, nor can we come in and change an individual element of a tuple. Okay? And... So let's take a look just for a second and see what we're actually getting here. Actually, you know what? This does a horrible job of showing tuples and strings, so let's not do that. Um, let's look at this instead. Okay, so when you declare a variable, and we'll get into this more with lists, so you don't have to worry about this so much with lists, uh, with, with tuples and, and strings, but when you say something like x equals three, four, five, what you're actually doing is you're setting up a piece of memory, 
X is a label for a piece of memory. And then that piece of memory points out to some other piece of memory outside of your, your variable space. And you're putting three, four, and five. Okay. You can't change with tuples, you can't change one of these. What you can do is do a completely new tuple, six, seven, ten, and point X off to there. And then probably get rid of that unless you have an additional pointer. Okay? So what you can't do is you can't change one of these with a tuple. You can change the tuple that X actually refers to. And again, we'll get into that a little bit more when we're talking about uh, aliasing and uh, lists and things like that. But, you know, this is, this is the model we want to we look at. And by the way, the same thing holds for a string, even though that's not how we actually look at it. So a string would actually, S would actually be a label for a piece of memory. And that piece of memory would point to, uh, let's do Monty, something like that. Okay, so that, that's exactly the same kind of orientation. And we'll, like I said, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but I do want to just kind of tell you what, what immutable means. Immutable means you can't change the M, you can't change the 7, but if you want to change where it points, if you want to change the entire string, you can actually do that. All right. Um, and that's not, like I said, that's not something you have to be too worried about right now, other than you need to know what immutable means. Um, you can't do this type of, uh, this type of single or substring uh, substitution, right? You have to create a new string and then assign that new string back into your variable. So we get a lot of questions about what are tuples good for. And when we get into lists, you guys will ask even more questions about why not just use a list. Um, so tuples, and by the way, I will... I don't know what the, the exact correct pronunciation of tuples, tuples is. Um, okay, um, I'm just reading the, the, the messages. Um, okay. Yeah, I am recording through, through uh, OBS. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, I did remember this time. Um, Okay, so the question is, what are tuples good for? Well, when we get into images, you'll see that tuples are really good for grouping things together. So if you have something, for example, in the XY plane, and you want to specify the coordinates, right, that's essentially a tuple, right? The X, the X coordinate is generally the first value of the tuple, and the Y coordinate is the second value of the tuple. Um, so it's a, it's a way of making multiple assignments. Um, and all of these actually work. So... Let me uh, go back to our handy dandy notebook. Um, we can say something like two, three, right? That is a tuple whose members are two, three. We can say X equals two, three, right? That assigns that into X. Um, now that we have X being two, three, we can do something like A comma B equals X, right? And that says take the first element of X and assign it to A and the second element of X and assign it to B, right? Oops, I hit return before I hit B, right? So that A is two, B is three. We can also say um, C comma D equals uh, seven, 12, right? So this is still a tuple and this is assigning a tuple into two variables. So C is seven and D is 12 with luck, yes. Um, we have to be careful though, because if we say something like C, D, E, well, now we're trying to assign three values from a tuple that only has two values and that's not enough values. Um, so, so we'll have, we'll have an issue. Um, and what happens if we go the other way, if we do C, D equals 7, 12, uh, 23, well, we still have too many values, it's just on the other side this time. Okay, so, um, yeah, well, the first one is not enough values, we expected three, we got two, and the second time there's too many values, 
Um, we expected to, of course, you know, we can assign the entire tuple uh, 7, 12, 23 to F. And F takes it just fine. It just becomes a tuple. So you can always use one tuple. You can always use one variable or you can use as many variables as you have elements of the tuple. Okay. Um, all right. Um, okay. What do we have here? Okay. So let's take a, a really quick look at something that some place where we might want to uh, look at tuples. Let's say we. So the question is, is the CS1 website down right now? It wasn't as of uh, 10 minutes ago. Okay. Um, are you guys getting, you guys can still see my slides, right? So you'll have to download it, low it download it afterwards. Um, but... For right now, um, yeah, here it is. It's just it's just slow. Um, you'll have to download it afterwards, but uh, but I have the notes, and if I have to, I can go to a PDF of the notes that I uh, that I already have secured. So it's not you know we can continue on. Um, all right, so uh, let's let's look at a function split, and let's say for split, what we're going to look at is let's say we have a two-digit number or no more than a two-digit number. And we want to pull out uh, the tens and the ones digit. So we will come in, uh, we'll put our little, I'm in the wrong window, there we go. We'll put our little uh, block up here and we'll say um, this is the implementation of the split, right? And then I'm going to go in and because I'm lazy, I'm going to, Cut and paste, and yeah, maybe I won't. We'll just keep, we'll just keep going, um, and then we'll come down and we'll define our split function. And what we're going to say is we're going to take one value. Um, they called it n. It's going to be an integer, or we're going to expect that it's an integer. Um, and we will put in some comments, and we will. Okay, I'm going to recommend you don't install Kite. This is a little bit more formal than you necessarily need to go. Although, by the way, if you do this and you fill out all those, you will be absolutely fine. Um, you know, fill out this top part. When when Kite gives you this little block, fill all this out, you will be absolutely fine with your comments. Um, take a two digit integer in parameter n and return a tuple a b Okay, this is a perfectly acceptable comment. Maybe I'd want to put down an example. Split 83. Let's say that returns um, the tuple 8, comma 3. Okay, this is a perfectly acceptable comment for the split function. Okay, and if you write this, you shouldn't have any problems. Now, the split function itself is going to be fairly uh, small. We want to pull out the tens digit from our number n, right? So n is the n is the parameter. It's the value that's been input. To get the tens digit, we just want to do integer divide by 10, right? So that's n slash slash 10. That'll put that tens digit. Actually, it'll, if, if, if there's hundreds and thousands, it'll put all of those over into uh, the tens digit. But it'll put the tens digit in the tens digit. If it's two, if it's a two-digit number like we're like we're specifying it should be, right, right up here, 
this is one of the limitations of our function and something we want to call out in the comments if we're aware of it. And now, right, and, and by the way, this is a good use. This is one of the things you often use this integer type math for. It's for splitting up numbers into components, hours, minutes, seconds, uh, tens digits, doing modulo arithmetic. Um, the slash is a floating point uh, divide. It will not give you, this will just give you how many times, how many whole number times 10 goes into uh, N. And then we would put out ones equals N modulo um, 10. And maybe because of my comments, maybe I should actually make this B and make this A, or change my comments, right? So this says B, our second value is, yeah, okay, that's no problem, uh, is, is whatever's left over, so that's the remainder, okay? And then we just need to return that tuple, so we would return A comma B. Okay, so hopefully that's, and, and uh, if there's any ambiguity, you can always use parentheses, but I think that for this one, there's no ambiguity. This should just work. Okay, and now we can actually test this. We can, uh, let's say we run it, right? And now I can do something like help split. And what you'll notice is that, right, when I ran this, right, when you run a function, Nothing gets executed, but it does parse the function and figure out what the function's all about, right? We, we saw this in Python Tutor. And now that we've run that, we can ask for help on it. And what it's going to do is, even if we don't have the source code sitting out here in front of us, it's going to give us back our comments as the comments for the split function. So this is very useful, and this is why it's really important that you have those initial comments. And we'll talk a little bit about these comments implementation. Okay, and we'll talk about this comment as well when we get into talking about modules. Um, all right, so now we can do something like split. We know what our test case is, right? We say that split 83 ought to return a tuple 83, and it does, and we can do split 99, and that'll give us 9 and 9, or split 1, and that should give us 0, 1. All right, so, so we've actually accomplished... Um, what what we wanted to do. And we can also do the opposite. Um, and actually, uh, maybe I'll just kill the, uh, grab this code from... There we are, lecture seven. Lecture seven notes, just to, to finish up the, uh, the test, right? This does a, a much nicer um, assignment. We just paste this down into here. It's going to set 80, x to 83. It's going to do our split and then it's going to print it out a little bit uh, more nicely than, than we did otherwise. All right. So, and a cup and a sip of cold coffee. All right. And we can do the opposite as well. We can come in here and we can write another thing that says combine. Uh, digits, I guess is what we used. And of course, if you're playing the game, you know that I missed the death and I don't have the colon in here. But digits is going to be a tuple, right? This time, instead of passing in an integer and returning a tuple, we're going to pass in a tuple and return an integer. And we will say something like take a tuple, uh, a three-digit tuple, a three-element uh, tuple uh, in digits and convert it to a number where digits sub zero is the hundreds digit and 
digits. Sub one is the tens digit. And I'm just going to say etc. because it's getting stupid. And then we can say something like combine with a B. One, two, one, three, five is going to return one thirty five. All right. And then we could just end our comment. And this is pretty easy as well. We can just say um, return digit sub zero times Okay, I think that's right. And I gotta strip these guys out. All right, let's see if that works. We'll run this again. Now we can ask for, the, we still have split in there, but we can ask for help on combine as well. And we can run And notice this time there is an ambiguity. If we leave this out, it doesn't know that this is supposed to be a tuple. It thinks it's supposed to be three different arguments. So we'll actually put those in, and that comes out correct. Um, my keyboard sounds like a drum, drum roll because, but um, bump, uh, because I have a, a nice Yeti microphone, but it sits on my desk. I need to get a, I need to get a, a microphone stand to isolate it. So it's beautiful, except when I drum on the desk, like hitting keys. Yep, Blue Yeti. It's awesome. Um, anyway, uh, that, that's what's going on. Um, all right, so combine works. And you can see that, that, you know, it's important as we start going through. And the reason this is important is, one, because if somebody's developing your code, they can look at it. But even if somebody doesn't actually ha have access to your code or you have this big, complicated piece of code, uh, no, no Twitch yet. Um, if you have this big, complicated piece of code, um, you can always get help on the functions just by asking for help on the functions. If, can I make the entire return statement visible? Yes, I probably can. All right, there we go. There's the entire return statement. Um, this is just a different way of doing multiplications. Uh, it actually saves, it saves operations. Um, all right. So that's those things. I'm going to give you, let's see, we have, yeah, we'll give you a few minutes. Let's take a look at the extra, the lecture exercises so you guys don't get confused this time. These lecture exercises are due. Um, if they come up, come on, wait for it, wait for it. I don't know what's going on with the system, but I will actually have to talk to, um, so the lecture exercises are only on the website. They're both in the paper copy. If we go to, sub actually, no, they, they are in the, they are on submittee. If we go to submittee and you go down. If you go down to the course, yeah, if you go down to the course materials and you look at the lecture notes for lecture seven, yeah, they're right at the end of the notes. Um, and they will be due, uh, I'll pop these up. Let me pop these up for a second. Um, we'll give you, yeah, it's, I, I'm going to ask Steve Lindsay what's going on. He's our, um, He's our lab staff guy. Um, okay, so this is that. We can look at the PDF just in case I have to look at the PDF for the rest. And the lecture exercises are 
down here at the end. We'll take, I don't know, just a few minutes. Just look at them. I don't think you'll have enough time to get done with them. But it's, it's not, it's, it's a fairly short lecture exercise. You know, so, but at least look through them and see how they kind of apply to what we're talking about. And note there's a few things here like um, we didn't talk about adding tuples yet. So think about what you think that'll do and then try it in your Python interpreter and see what it actually gives you back. Um, because, you know, we, we've defined the addition operator we've uh, for strings and floats and integers. And now we're defining it again for tuples. And it could do multiple different things. So just kind of look at, at what that does. Does it work like a string? Does it work like a uh, does it work like a, a addition operator for for, for uh, uh, numerics? So just you know, kind of take a look at that. We'll give you a couple of minutes. Um, and while you're going through that, I also want to point out that as we get into the uh, image portion of our show today, um, there's this little file lecture seven images dot zip. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll go through some stuff uh, using images and they will be in all the images you need are in that zip file um, to replicate what we have uh, here today.